common sensors thank you so much for watching this video and for tuning in and remember to subscribe to my youtube channel common sense mamita today i have the special privilege of interviewing one of my dearest bestest oldest friends not that she's old <laughs> but i've known her since i came out to california when i was 18 years old and she was 18 and a half i'm so proud of her and i'm so excited to be able to Bring her to the internet to you guys. <laughs> you are in for such a treat. Please welcome Louisa Lachin. Wow, thanks for the intro. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you, first of all. And I just want to say how proud I am of you because um, to see how you started, um, I wasn't there for the dancing, <laughs> but to see that you started as a dancer and yeah. then as a teenager, started getting it, went from dance as a kid, and then crossed over to acting. I was taking acting lessons at the same time. When I was a ballet dancer, so n not very practical, but I got injured when I was 15, so I had this summer where, where I couldn't dance, and my mom took me down to HB Studios to, and enrolled me in an acting class, and I remember screaming at her all the way home from, from Greenwich Village to the west side going, you've ruined my life, what have you done? I mean, absolutely hysterical, and she's like, I said what they did. You can, you're as good as that, you know, these scenes. And that, that started the whole trajectory. And her mother was the most amazing woman ever. <laughs> I adopted her as my mother, yeah. Louise. So you, so you started at HB Studio. And for those of you who don't know what HB Studio is, it was the Uta Hagen, uh, Herbert, Herbert Bergoff. Bergoff Studios. Yeah, so, which is still there. And you studied with? Uta Hagen. <laughs> How was that? It was pretty amazing. I, I was actually one of her youngest students. She, you couldn't get in unless you were 18, and I was like 17 and a half. And uh, it was it was crazy to just even get in. You had to sign up. You had to you had to get up at four in the morning. The line was all the way around the block. It was terrifying, you know, because she she'd look at you and she's like. Well, you know you're overacting. You know you're indicating. You know, and 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 I'm like, eh, you know. But somehow uh, I did get in, and I studied with her for three years, and it was just amazing. It wow. was amazing. Yeah. You also went to the high school of performing yes. arts. So she's just <laughs> been set up for success. So you were at the high school of performing arts, and who was in your class? Freddie Prince. Freddie Prince, yeah. I was in, in the ballet department, he was in, in the drama department, and he falls in love with Arlene Guisante, <laughs> who's, a, who's a dancer, and then she would have none of him, so then he kind of turned to me and he, and he asked me out a couple of times, and we went out as friends, obviously, and he, he was just so generous. It's like, I remember he's like, he just wanted to buy me things, he was just extremely generous and very kind, and. I'll never forget one of the teachers, one of the, his drama teacher, um, made this statement. Said he's either going to be hugely famous, or he's there's going to be a tragic ending. And and in fact, it was both. Mm. You know, so it was predictable even then. But um, wow. yeah. So with Uda, going back to Uda, I just wanted to talk about Uda. Freddie because you know that's I yeah. love Yeah, no, he was um, a doll. He was a doll. And um, with Uda, what were a couple of the things that you took away that you still use today? Oh wow, that's a great question. Uda Hagen was unbelievably disciplined, and it, it was very technical. You know, she really taught you the building blocks of acting, you know, how to break down a scene, how to break down character, what's my motivation, what's the obstacle, and it was really very Stanislavski method and very rigorous. To this day, it's like I, I, I'm writing, I'm working on a pilot that I sold right now, and I was having some issues with the character and what the character wanted, and I went, duh, you know, so I went back to the who am I? which actors are taught to do, you know, and then I did a whole background uh, story for my character and, 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 and so went back to that, so I'm still using it. And then what I found when I came out here, I studied with Ken McMillan. I remember. He was a great addition because what he did, his whole philosophy was forget all the technique and just be in the moment and feel and just kind of throw it away in that sense and, and just be in that moment. So it was a great uh, next step. So 
Yes. And, and for those of you who don't know Uta Hagen, her book, Respect for Acting, was a book that was used everywhere for yeah. actors. That was the first book that I had. I don't know about you, but that was the first yeah. acting book that I worked off of. And it's still, you can still pick it up today and get so much value from, yeah, from it. Definitely. I love her. And just the great teachers that were spawned off from her, Howard Fine, Larry Moss, yeah. uh, Roy London. I mean, they're just great teachers that really took what she did and then they yeah. brought in their own twist to and it. And I have to tell you, it doesn't matter who you were, every one of her students was terrified. <laughs> they were just, every every scene study class, you know, every Thursday or whatever, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I mean, it's absolutely terrifying every time. Amazing. <laughs> so then you studied uh, three years with Uda and yeah. then you came to L.A., and you started acting. Yeah, so what happened was I, I was a ballet dancer since I was five, and th this is what I was going to be. I ended up dancing in a company in, in Geneva, Switzerland, and this was my first kind of crossroads epiphany. I realized I wasn't like the most natural dancer. It, it was like sheer determination that got me to that point. And you had polio as a little kid. Yeah, so. which is why I started dancing. But um, I realized... I was never going to really go all the way with this, and it was just hard. It was just hard. So thank God I, I had already started, you know, adding the acting. The transition. Yeah. The transition. And so I transitioned, and it, it not easy because when you're used to taking five classes a day, then you reduce it to two, and then you're like, why am I doing two classes? You know, and then you want, you know, and then and then you join a gym. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Acting was so much more easy in the sense of preparation, physicality, all of that. And I came out here to to launch, you know, a, a stronger acting career. Because in New York, I actually started doing Spanish language commercials. And I go so far back. I mean, I do feel that, that I've spanned the Latino trajectory in this business because in the 70s... Um, I would go into agencies and I had kind of long hair and I looked the way I did and they were like, oh God, no, you're way too ethnic. Trust me, you're never gonna do a commercial, ever. And it was, I'd literally get asked to leave the offices and just kicked out. And then started doing some Spanish language commercials and it was just starting to I wanna to stop one yeah. second, because even though they said no to you that it wasn't gonna happen, you turned that around. Yes, I mean, you, you have to, you just, yeah, you have to, you know, get mad, get even. <laughs> I mean, kind of thing, you know. You had to really fight that because you didn't, you could, you know, it was hard not to believe it. So, you know, Alexa, it's hard not to believe it. So, Louisa was not only doing commercials, Spanish speaking commercials, voiceovers, and, and on camera commercials, but she became the commercial queen. <laughs> she was doing all commercials, and some of them even got to cross over. Yes. And I, that was fantastic. Which, at the time, you know, here you are, you know, we speak perfect English, perfect Spanish, and I'd talk to the, the producers, you know, Johnson Johnson, whatever, and McDonald's, and go, you know, guys, you could save so much money to shoot English and Spanish right here, same set, same actors. It's like, oh, no, we couldn't do that. You know, and, you know it was like, I couldn't understand it couldn't understand it and no common sense <laughs> they had no common it sense. all comes back to, to that sense. seriously yeah common sense is worth more than iq points for sure <laughs> i think so